France. I'm joined by uh, Florence Villemont. Um, a lot of focus on a budding uh, scandal within the opposition UMP party, Florence. That's right. It all started with this week's issue of Le Point. It's called it L'Affaire Copé, the Copé scandal. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to try to walk you through it. You can see the front page of Le Point here. Let's go back to 2012. Former President uh, Nicolas Sarkozy was accused of sucking all the money out of the UMP's coffers during his presidential run. But according to Le Point, it wasn't Sarkozy that was responsible for this financial fiasco. It was actually Jean-François Copé, the party leader. According to uh, Le Point, it wonders what if Sarkozy was robbed. Le Point says it has documents uh, that show that Jean-François Copé uh, is linked to a communications firm run by some of his friends that actually filled its pockets during Sarkozy's uh, presidential run by overcharging for various services it provided. Now, Le Point basically says that Copé was using party money hmm. to uh, help his buddies out here. But Coupé has denied all these allegations and says that, well, he's being set up by Le Point, according to him. Well, surely the uh, left-wing press is, is rubbing its hand gleefully. That's right. Libération loves any occasion it can get to uh, ram into the UMP. They're also focusing on this. You see a very perplexed-looking uh, coupé there on the front page. Now, Libération focuses on how silent the right-wing party is being about this whole scandal. They say that yesterday the atmosphere at the UMP's headquarters was, well, pretty strange when this news came out because, according to Libé, Le Point's revelations aren't really much of a surprise for the right, but nobody wants to put throw oil on the fire because we have very important municipal elections coming up in just one month. So even Coupé's arch enemies, like François Fillon, the former mm. uh, pr uh, prime minister, well, he is also stay staying silent about this whole thing, which is pretty surprising for It's François very Fillon. surprising. Listen, the Huff Huffington uh, Post, that's also focusing on the UMP and how it's standing behind its leader. That's right. Now, the Huffington Post uh, on its French version says, même pas vrai, none of this is true. That's what, uh, according to the Huffington Post, not only the voters, but also elected officials, they're not buying any of this. Now, according to the Huffington Post, there's almost a sacred union behind Coupé. Uh, UMP voters are afraid that all this could open old wounds because after Nicolas Sarkozy's failed presidential uh, re-election in 2012, the party was nearly in, split in two mm. uh, because of bitter fighting between Jean-François Coupé and François Fillon for the uh, party's leadership. So uh, according to this article, the UMP really can't afford any more fighting, especially with these elections coming up. Basically, they want to turn the page and focus on the elections. All right, well, away from the UMP party, Liberation is also taking a closer look at the possibility of Russian intervention in uh, Crimea. That's right. Now, Le Figaro is focusing on this on their front page. They're talking about a high-risk escalation. The country uh, very much divided between pro-Russians and pro-Europeans, especially in uh, Crimea. Now, uh, mm -hmm. according to uh, Le Figaro, uh, th all this comes as Russia is really flexing its military muscle, ordering those 150,000 uh, troops to move immediately into a state of combat readiness. And it's editorial, Le Figaro calls on the international community to really mobilize. Uh, it says we need diplomacy before tanks. Basically, uh, the international community really needs to avoid the worst case scenario, and that would be some sort of a repeat of the war in Georgia in 2008. Now, Le Croix is uh, focusing on this kind of holistically. How is Europe dealing with all of this? That's right. Uh, now, uh, Le Croix, first of all, focuses on exactly what's going on in the EU. EU. There was a meeting on uh, Wednesday where they talked about the situation in Ukraine. So uh, Le Croix says that, that Europe really wants to help Ukraine, but it's reticent to talk about EU membership. And there's actually a very interesting editorial in La Croix today, uh, which talks about what this whole crisis has revealed about Europe. And basically, it says, says that Europe is actually two-faced. It's kind of like a coin. You have the flip side and the other side that's like the light side and the dark side. La Croix says, on the one hand, you have attractive Europe, Europe that's attractive to, say, Ukraine. But then you have repulsive Europe that, uh, for instance, Iceland has said that it's not so much interested in joining the EU. You have uh, the UK that kind of wants out as well. So uh, La Croix really focuses on these two conflicting sides of Europe, but says that Europeans really have a responsibility to support Ukraine alongside Russia uh, and to really open their arms to these people who want to be more European. Okay, Florence, thanks very much for that update of the uh, French press today.
Much appreciated. OK, well, just before we move on, let's give you a reminder of what's going on in Ukraine. That's, of course, our top story this hour, reminding you that there's been an apparent show of force at a strategic point. Our men patrol uh, Crimea's main regional airport. This is Ukraine's ousted president, Viktor Yanukovych, prepares to speak for the first time since fleeing Kiev. Meanwhile, we remind you that in the latest news in, Interfax News Agency says the military airport in Sevastopol in Ukraine's Crimea region has been seized by Russian servicemen.